is a little patch in front of our house that we're quite stoked with at the moment. It's a whole bunch of different things all chipped together in the same space. They're kind of, it's, it's partly planned and partly random, which is quite nice. We like that. We do that quite a lot. And it enables us to neglect things and still claim that there is a purpose to them. Um, which is great, really, because it takes off a bit of pressure in the garden. And I always have to justify what everything is doing and why it's doing that. So on, the, on my left here, we've got this area that we dug down quite relatively deep compared to everywhere else. We dug a pit and we've put a plastic container in that pit. And that plastic container, when there's lots and lots and lots of rain about, fills up with water. And when we have overflow from our stormwater collection system, from our water tanks, that overflow comes down here. And in this little patch, we've got ropor growing. And for a plant that, that's kind of typically a wetland plant, it doesn't mind it in here when it's quite dry. It only ever seems to put up two main stems, and then it just dies back. So this last year's two stems are here, and then before that it had two stems. So these ones here, they'll send up a big flower stalk and have a beautiful flower stalk, and they'll die off, and then next year it'll probably send up another two stems in a different spot. We've also got peppermint growing in there, and a spearmint growing as well. We tried some watercress, but it, I think it just got a bit too much, too dry. There's lots and lots of this Roman chamomile, perennial chamomile all around, which just smells fabulous and is flowering like crazy and encouraging lots and lots of wonderful little creatures. Just sitting here a second ago, I had hoverflies coming past, a little wee bug-eye hoverfly, and um, the European tube wasp that we know likes to collect white butterfly caterpillars and feed them to its young and of course bumblebees as well so lots of great different invertebrates that are supporting our system uh, we've got a big carex in here and I cut this back very hard not that long ago and it's all growing back again we've got another carex, a little wee carex testacea which just isn't quite as grunty as the other carex and struggles along a bit, plus we're being a bit a bit clever and we planted these little miniature harakeke in here um, emerald gem or something I think it's called they're just so wee it, it, I've had to do so much work to to weed around them and maintain them that I, I'm not convinced they're that great in this setting that they need a bit more care than we can really offer but we've also got um, this nice sand caprosma in here, acerosa I think it's called, or something like that. Which is just spreading really nicely, right through, wherever it can. There's this other great caprosma here, which is quite slow growing. It's probably four years old and it's only got about this high, but it's just, just so neat. This beautiful texture to it and it just looks lovely. And it kind of almost um, creates like a... A bit of a miniature scene here almost with these little wee harakiki and then this little thing. Um, so we quite like that about it as well. We've also got this particular red leaf salvia that seems to enjoy this spot too that adds a bit of extra colour. And then there's white clover all through here and this yellow flowered uh, bird's foot trefoil, the lotus carniculatus. This is mayhem. There's some white strawberries growing down here, yarrow all sorts and then it kind of melds around here as it sort of comes up and gets a bit drier and we've got a whole lot of this russell lupin this perennial lupin that just self-seeded and we just never got around to doing anything with it so it's kind of filled up the space this is meant to be a path through here but obviously we never walk through here so probably doesn't even need to be a path so we've got this lovely movement from these white flowers down here these the perennial Roman chamomile, and this is a, a form of that perennial Roman chamomile called uh, Floriplano, which is a doubled form, which is real pretty, but I mean it's useless to to creatures, useless to any other creature. This is like purely for human pleasure kind of a flower, um, because you can see here they've got access to nectar and pollen, but on this thing here, like where's the nectar and pollen? Hello, useless. I'm a bee. What have you got for me? Nothing. So that's a real human um, construct there. 
and then you know there's the white yarrow and then it comes and shifts and we've got this pink yarrow in here too which is lovely and Trish planted a whole lot of endive in here and now the endive has started to flower and, go, and is going to seed and it's got these beautiful funky crazy blunt ended seed heads that it's just like un unlike anything else I've seen it just looks looks kind of like it's unfinished or something but these beautiful flowers forming on here and it all fits together really nicely there's even some little um, viola in here and just some random lettuces and brassicas oh, oh yeah and this whole edge <laughs> not that you can see it anymore is made up of winter savory which has been growing all through the winter it's just it's about to flower it smells days. incredible about to flower so we might even trim some of us back but then stacking up you've got the yellow calendula looking really lovely moving up into here which is just two carrots that were in the garden last year that we didn't harvest this is just two carrots here flowering and the the all of these massive flower heads are such a huge attraction for tiny little beneficial insects the creatures with the tiny wee mouths they need all these little beautiful little flowers to eat so they look sensational and they're feeding so many wonderful creatures so this whole area of beautiful randomness is, is just providing so many wonderful features for us and then it kind of melds into what actually is initially we intended to have which was a bit more of a, a garden shallots. so there's some <laughs> lettuces in here and then there's actually some shallots still growing in here looking quite good um, but it's gradually becoming much more of a perennial garden space and, and that's okay we're creating better bigger easier to manage annual gardens a little bit further away and we're more and more appreciating just how we can have this space around us that is a little bit wilder a little bit freer and able to express itself in its own way so that's pretty nice Tree. fruit tree we're, yeah we're thank you Trish. Yeah, we're talking about putting in a fruit tree here as well so we're, we're going to tuck something in a little bit further over and so that'll be nice with all of these perennials they'll fit together in a nice kind of a guild the reason we want a fruit tree is actually largely for shade for our lawn so that we can, when it's punishingly hot like this over summer we've got somewhere we can lie that's nice and shady possibly cherries i think would be quite nice some more you know we don't want to be blocking too much sun but we'd love a little shady area that also has some kind of productivity um, but yeah it's it's kind of all about just embracing the, the self-expression of this particular space and these plants within it we do we interact with it that's what we're all about is interacting with plants and interacting with our landscape so there's this um, I think it's epilobium this sort of willow herb and that, that grows a lot all over the place and it can get a little bit weedy in the garden beds um, so I don't have a problem with coming in and interacting and pulling some of this stuff out but it's not like it, it's uh, particularly overbearing, so I'm not going to go overboard with it. Um, in fact, oh yeah, so it's about to make seeds, so that's good timing for that. Um, yeah, that's just, that's really nice. Just letting it be and expressing what it wants to express. It's nice to be part of it.